Now the students out here organize a restaurant every Friday. They are doing mother cuisine today. Mother cuisine. Yeah. That looks wonderful. Can is that a traditional way of doing it, of cooking the meat with the turnip? Yes, sir. We do it traditionally with turnip. The breadth and the depth that they are trying to capture is fantastic. But in that bundi raita is where I'm finding that spicy the punch, the garam, the garam red chilli punch, the salt that's making me sweat at the back of my head. So this is paneer pasanda. Okay. So this is the gravy for paneer pasanda, and we there have stuffed paneer ready. Hmm. Moran kira, moda tatan, adar, adar. What I like about this Colombo. The Nati Koli Colombo yes. is that it also has some of the skin in that, and that skin is what conveys all the flavor. Flavor, definitely. Huh? Mm. The potatoes are soft and creamy. Oh, that's delicious. Hi, folks. This is Kripa Lamana, Gourmet on the Road, and you're watching Food Lovers TV. We've stepped out for lunch here in Namma Bengaluru, but this time we're not going to any restaurant or any eatery. We've come to a university, most specifically Christ University, the Department of Hotel Management. Now the students out here organize a restaurant every Friday, and what's interesting about this restaurant is the fact that they are showcasing some interesting Indian flavors. Namaskara. Namaskar. How Good. are you doing, Kirby? Great. Good. Thank you so much for coming. The pleasure is all mine. Uh -huh. You say food, I'll I be there. I know you are there. <laughs> and secondly, this is an initiative that's run by the students, students, and that's the reason why I wanted to be here. So I'm with Mr. Kirby Nigli, who's the head of the department, hotel management here at Christ University. Exactly. Yes. Uh, so tell me more about this. So this initiative was started in 2016. Okay. So we thought that the students have to get a practical aspect of it. It ah. is just not the traditional hotel management style of learning. Okay. But we wanted to engage in experiential learning. Ah, okay. So we started this uh, two days a week, Wednesdays and Fridays. Wednesdays we focus on Asian and uh, European cuisine. All right. Based on the semesters. Okay. And on Fridays. It's mother cuisine. That's when you have come here. That's right. We are here on a Friday, uh, and what are the cuisines that we are tasting today? Today it will be Naidu cuisine, Uttar Pradesh cuisine, and the Mudaliyar cuisine. Oh, fantastic! So you've got flavors of Tamil Nadu, you've got flavors of Uttar Pradesh, Dish. and of uh, Mudaliyar is a mix of you know from Tamil Nadu and uh, probably little bit of South Indian. South India. and then Telangana is well. so Telang the Naidu yeah, cuisine. Mudaliyar. Yes, Naidu cuisine. Naidu cuisine is Telangana, yes. Andhra Pradesh, and things like yes. that. And this is done entirely by students. By students. So the concept is in in terms of the mother cuisine, uh. we ask them to specialize in their mother cuisine. Okay. So this lady who's uh, specializing in Naidu cuisine, they are from Naidus. Oh. So they get their recipes from their grandmothers or from their aunts. So it's flavors that they used they to. Used to, yeah. Fantastic. And yes. I think this is such a wonderful initiative because what you're doing is you're getting them to appreciate the cuisine that they've probably grown up with Definitely. more in detail, yeah. right? And today, sometimes even this girl, uh. or these students, the generation would not know. What their mother cuisine is, ah. because they use for use to many other cuisines today, which is popular amongst the you know, millennials. Correct. So we want them to go back ah. and research it on. I think what also happens is many a times, like there's an old Hindi saying, "Ghar ki murgi dal barabar," True. right? Because you. Grown up with those flavors, you don't really think too much about it. But I think an initiative like this, what you're doing through this restaurant, and what's the restaurant called? We have just kept it as experiential learning restaurant, so ah. it's called ELR. ELR. Ah, and okay. So we want that to be also uh, uh, focused because the students ha should know that this is an experiential learning restaurant. This is a lab ah. for us. On the other side, they also practice, learn from it. Fantastic. They, uh, they learn aspects not only on food but also managing the restaurant. And speaking of guests. You have people who can come in from outside, and yes, we uh, appreciate that. Okay, anybody can book. How do they book? So we post on uh, social media. We post it on the WhatsApp groups. We also okay. do it on uh, email. The advantage for us is we have got fifteen thousand people ah. inside the campus, and we have got only forty covers. So it just uh, is sold out in about uh, one minute. Wow! <laughs> so well, this is like I think fastest finger first. 
for whatever it's worth i think i will place the social media pages of christ university in the video description and who knows if you're lucky you'll probably also get to dine here with the students at the department of hotel management christ university i just heard the bell ring yes so i think we should probably go to the kitchen and check out what's cooking the class is just over you have the hustle of the students Namaskara how are you guys doing So your chef Raj yes Bharat yes very nice to meet you chef nice to meet you too yeah. and you look after these students here yes so i do take care of indian cuisine basically uh, they are finally a students okay and they are doing mother cuisine today mother cuisine so yeah so they they have to come up with their own thali own menu basically okay uh, with uh, something very unique maybe on the ingredients or the overall dish itself uh. so we have three students today who are doing three different cuisines today. Namaskara. Namaste, sir. Namaskara. What's your name? I'm Darshini, sir. Darshini. Yes, sir. And what are you cooking today? So today uh, I'm doing the Naidu cuisine. Naidu. Nine okay. items on the menu. Oh, nine items. Yes, sir. So we have a cluster beef which we call gourd chikrukai. Then we have irakai dal with rich gourd. Dal with rich gourd. Okay. Yes, sir. Then we also have a uh, brinjal and prawn. It's a oh. kind of curry. That's the combination. What yeah. do you call uh, prawns in Telugu? Telugu. Uh, royal lu royal lu oh fantastic so you got yes, some royal lu with some uh, brinjal brinjal and ah. we have mutton chops cooking it's a green masala it's in the cooker right now and that's rasa fantastic we're making bhaji chili bhaji mirik pai bhaji with we call it that <laughs> Fantastic. Yes, How have you cooked the mutton? So we made a green masala uh, containing of uh, mint, coriander, and green chili with a pepper base. It's slightly it has a chutney touch to it. So how long has the mutton been cooking? So we've left it for around fifteen uh, twenty minutes. We need four whistles. Four whistles. Yeah, you know, that's the best thing about a pressure cooker. Even while the meat is cooking in that, every once in a while, the whistle will pop up just to allow you a bit of what's cooking inside. That looks wonderful. What is that there? We also added turnip, so Ooh. it gives a nice flavor to the mutton chops. Fantastic! And is that a traditional way of doing it, of cooking the meat with the turnip? Yes, sir. We do it traditionally with turnip. Oh, Usually lovely! Usually we make it as a curry, but today ah. it's, we'll try sauteing it also. I love the manner in which all that oil and that oil is perhaps the fat from the goat. It's the fat from the goat, sir. Has floated to that top of that curry, and I'm sure carrying with it all the flavors. Yes, ah. sir. Led principally by the coriander and the mint. I can't wait to taste this. I'm um, I can't wait to serve it to you sir. Thank you. I want to head over to the Mudaliyar cuisine section but that royalu is calling out to me. Huh? I hope you don't mind me tasting this. I'm very glad if you do it. Will sir. you serve me one? I'm brinjal too. Brinjal well okay if you insist. <laughs> It's a nice combination sir. I think I'm going to taste the Wang Kaya first, Wang uh, because Kaya. once I taste the Royalu, I think that Wang Kaya will be ignored. Huh? Mm. So the Wang Kaya is soft. Yes, sir. We want it a little soft, so it goes well with the prawns. Like mm. we want the prawn to be more dominant and have the crunchy taste. Also, in terms of flavors, I'm registering a fair bit of the tamarind, the sourness. Yes, sir. We have ta tamarind. We added it for the sourness. There's also some tomatoes in it. Yeah, tomato onion. We've sauteed it. That wangka is quite flavorful in itself. I'm so glad. Hmm. You know the prawns are cooked just right. I'm so happy. Actually, my friend Benjamin, he helped me make yeah. prawns. Yeah. Hmm. You know what's nice about the wangka? Yeah. Yes, sir. Is that it absorbs all the flavors of the spices. Yes. Sir. So even before you taste the prawns, you already get a good insight into that vapor. Vapor. That royalu, wang kaya vapor. Just by tasting the wang kaya or the eggplant. Thank you. I think I should move back. Thank you so much, sir. Yes, sir. To the Mudaliyar section. Yes. Namaskara. Hello, sir. Namaste. Good afternoon. What's your name? I'm Priyanka. And what are you cooking here today? So today I'm making the Mudaliyar cuisine. Okay. What I have here is a uh, modakatan and murangkira ade. So modakatan is a green called balloon wine in English. Balloon wine. Yes. So I use the dehydrated powder of the same green to flavor it. It just gives a slight bitter taste. 
and drumstick leaves. Ah, that's the moringa. Yes, ah, moringa kira. Moringa kira. Yes. Kira is leaf. Kira is yes. Yeah. And like ada is a little more thicker version of a dosa. Fantastic. And what's the base for that? Just chana dal. Just chana dal. Soak chana dal, some boiled rice, some idli rice, and some urad dal for color. And what are we going to be tasting? That what did you say? Ada. Ada. But what ada? Moringa kira, moringa katan ada. Oh my God, that's a mouthful. Moringa kira. Moringa katan. Moringa kira, moringa tna. Moringa kira, moringa katan. Ada. Ada. I think that's the only time you will hear it from me in this show. Fantastic. What are we going to taste this with? This we have a nati koli kolam over here. This looks like it's been cooking for a while. What I like about this kolambu, the nati koli kolambu, yes. is that it also has some of the skin in that, and that skin is what conveys all the flavors. Flavor, definitely. Uh, so, are these recipes that you grew up with? Yes, sir. Uh, Almost every week we have this during Sundays. Because uh, uh, the Murliya cuisine is not very dominant with non-veg, so during the rest of the week we have vegetarian, and Sundays is usually non-veg. So Sundays is a feast. Yes. So whatever you do, make sure you don't fall ill on a Sunday yeah. at home. Huh? <laughs> Sunday you basically get your appetite ready. Fantastic. This is the vegetarian sambar. I have sambar. drumstick, brinjal, and raw mango. That's a thick sambar. Yes, sir. And I think that's very typical of Tamil-style sambars, yes, right? Yes, sir. Tamil sambars are rich in the lentils. Yes. Fantastic. And to temper this, I have something known as vada gum. Huh. Vada gum is something which I add over here, which has dried shallots. There's cumin, there's garlic, everything which is sun dried, and it can be kept for however long it is. So this you put after the sambar is cooked. Yes, I temper it with some oil and then put it in. Oh, I want to taste that vada gum. Vada gum. Am I saying it right? Yes, sir. It's very pungent and has a very strong flavor. I can see the garlic peel in that. Plenty of garlic. Yes. Mm. What is the nutty thing that I'm tasting in that? Nutty is the cumin. Mmm. Your mum made this last year. Yes. So the older it gets, the more intense the flavor is. Mmm. There's also a slight bitterness to it, right? Yes. That's because of the dried shallots. Wonderful. I can actually visualize how that will marry into that yes, sambar. That's a flavor punch, a yes, flavor sir. bomb right there. This completes the sambar in our house always. So there is no esophagitis that goes in. No. No hingu. No. So instead of that, this vada gum. This vada gum complements everything. You also have some horse gram here. Yes, sir. So I first cooked the horse gram in a pressure cooker. I strained out the water and I made rasam with it. Oh. So it's called kollu rasam. Kollu means horse gram. Lot of the pund. Yes. Uh, garlic. I, I can smell a lot of the pund, the garlic in that. Yes, sir. Uh, you know my, I love. Dabbling in the local languages, but typically when I go to a place, it's only one language at a time. I've just come over from a Telugu counter right here to a Tamil counter. I think I'm going to have my languages all mixed up, but I love the flavor of the pundu or the garlic. Oh, a lot of the tamarind as well. Yes, in that, sir. Huh? It's mainly the tamarind and the bitterness from the horse gram water. From the horse gram. With the horse gram, you typically associate that very earthy sort of a yes, flavor. Sir. I'm not tasting too much of that. I think what I'm tasting more is the tamarind. The tamarind yes. is the sourness of the tamarind. Yes, sir. And for heat, is there some pepper in that? There is some pepper in the rasam powder. In the rasam powder, yes. ah, lovely. And this is what the this is nettili mean varwal. Nettili mean varwal. Yeah, so it's just anchovies marinated with just some ginger, garlic, chili, salt, and lime. You know, every section that I'm looking at seems to have not just one but a few culinary. Jewels, thank you very much. I right. can't wait to taste all your dishes together on one thali. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I hope you enjoy your meal. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Namaskar, sir. What's your name? I'm Chavi. Chavi. Yes, sir. And where are you from, Chavi? I'm from Rajasthan. From Jodhpur. Rajasthan, Jodhpur. Yes. Or kya bana rahe ho aap? Today I'm going to be making uh, Uttar Pradesh thali, Uttar Pradesh cuisine. Uttar Pradesh cuisine. Yes. Wo kaise? Aap ho Rajasthan se. So my roots are from Uttar Pradesh. My father is from Uttar Pradesh. Ah, so this yes. is the sort of food that you've grown up with. Yes. So, what have you made? So, sir, this is butter ki tahiri. Butter ki tahiri. Huh. This is peas pulao. Huh. And then there you have arhar dal. Arhar dal. Yes, sir. And hara uh, bara kebab. Hara bara kebab. This is base. Me kya hai? Spinach. Spinach, peas, and coriander. Fantastic. Ab and mathura ke dukki ke aalu. So, why do you call it dukki ke aalu? Because it's not liquidy and not uh, dry also, so it's semi-dry. Ah. So that's it. So it's 
उसमें क्या स्पाइस जाता है खटास है कुछ इसमें बनाओगे Well, I thought we have to taste something, and what better than that harabara kebab, which is now being cooked right now, fresh and cooked, with some cashew on top. It's quite crunchy, <laughs> and then soft. Everything smashed and it. Ah. We made a paste out of it, and then we put uh, gram flour in it and bread crumbs, so that it could bind properly. Plenty of mint in that chutney. Yes, it's coriander and mint. Hmm. And, and green chilli. chilli. Green chilli. Green sorry. chillies. Yes, sir. Is there spicing in it? No, that's why the chutney is spicy ah. because this is not spicy that much. So in this you can appreciate more of the vegetal flavors. Yes, sir. And if you want a bit of a kick, then you go for that chutney. So this is paneer pasanda. Okay. So this is the gravy for paneer pasanda, and we there have stuffed paneer ready. Okay. So that's deep fried with stuffing. So we'll be serving it with that. So this looks like a very rich sort of a curry. Yes, sir. It's it, it has the base is very has cashew is in it. Cashew. So it is rich. Makhane ki khee. This is oh, for our dessert. For dessert. Yes, sir. So that's why he's roasting the makhana yes, there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll be putting it for the crunchiness on top. Oh, fantastic. Definitely a lot of action happening in this yes kitchen, huh? Of course, yeah. So we can able to see at least. 30 dishes when they said they're doing three different cuisines i expected one or two dishes from each region but out here if you look at the board behind me i think each one of them has at least about 8 9 dishes that they are presenting and all these have been made from scratch by the students entirely who've been working here for the last 3 hours so i think it's time to go upstairs and finally get to taste what the students of christ university hotel management have put together in this wonderful delicious initiative so when i sit here you know of course i am in christ university and i'm mindful of that but apart from that it feels like you're sitting in a restaurant right from the table appointments to the glassware the crockery the cutlery and also those wonderful flowers out there and not to forget the menus that have been also printed there's a lot of effort that goes into yeah that's what we want so we want detailing to happen uh, so say for example this flower those uh, are students who specialize in flowers oh they're the so ones they who do it. it so that's a different team so the flowers don't come from outside No, 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 no. This is done by our students. Wow. I will also introduce the students if you want. They, 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 there's a team who did this: the candle, the, the decor, and stuff. so. So you're ensuring that your students get as much hands-on experience in real-life situations. I think you come here and you order one of the thalis. But since we are tasting, I think we'll try all three. Yes, we should. And I think we'll probably make a beginning with the Uttar Pradesh thali. This is not meant to be a detailed review like you would typically see in gourmet on the road. Well, out here we're going to nibble at a few things and share that experience with you. For starters, we have hara hara kebab with okay. mint chutney and tamarind chutney. Okay. Then for the curries, we have paneer pasanda here. We, uh, we have mathura ke dukki aalu and then we have arhar dal for accompaniments we have puri uh, matar ki tahiri and bundi ka raita and for desserts we have mukhane ki kheer so little bedni puri so in our normal puri we don't put anything but in bedni we grind urad dal paste and then we put it and we infuse along it along with the wheat yes sir ah fantastic thank you very much thank you thank sir you. enjoy your meal thank you well that certainly looks like a loaded thali right there you've got the Naidu cuisine. Naidu cuisine, fantastic. I'm amazed at the depth of dishes that you have on every thali. The hara bara kebab, I tasted it downstairs as well. What I like is the balance of flavors in that. So this puri, I'm told, is fortified with some urad dal too. Mm. Certainly feels weighty and dense in its texture. 
and I suspect the dish to have with that puri, the bedmi puri, would be the Mathura ke dubki wale aalu. Mm. The potatoes are soft and creamy. So the base for this is tomatoes, but you're not tasting too much of the tartness of the tomatoes. Let's taste that arhar dal next. That's a thick dal. Mmm. Very good. So to me, a good dal has to be one that comforts you. Because at the end of the day, what you want is just some dal and charm. And this dal fits the bill perfectly well. It's thick. It's lush, it's creamy, and it's got that flavoring of that zira or the cumin that goes into it at the very end in the tempering with some desi ghee, I suspect. Yes. Hmm? Oh, that's delicious. Mm. I suspect this dal will also do well with the bedami puri. Get a nice, generous scoop of the dal, the arhar dal, within the folds of my bedami puri. Mm. Let's taste a bit of the paneer pasanda now. There's some cream that's drizzled on top of the paneer. So I'm told this is this is paneer that's stuffed with some paneer and then deep fried, served along with that gravy. That's a thick gravy. Definitely the body of the cashew, and I can taste the cardamom in that gravy. There's also some raisins in that stuffing. It's very similar to a makhani gravy. Makhani gravy. A little heavier on the side, right? Mm. Little cashew paste, butter. Oh, I love that sweet pop of the raisin in that. It opens from 1 o'clock till about... We operate, start operating from 12.30 to 2. Mm. Our, last, our last order is at 1.20. So basically, they have to ensure that they serve everybody in that one hour window. Let's go now for that pulao. Nice here is that the grains are individual, yet they pack in a bit of that moistness that you need when you're tasting a pulao. And the bundi raita would make for a great companion. Mm. The spicing of the red chili powder is certainly the sort that is quite bold, quite assertive. Although I would have liked to spend some more time with this thali, I also need to taste the other two thalis that they have. So sadly, I'll have to let it go, but not before tasting that kheer, makhane ki kheer. Mm. Very light. Very light? Very light. The starchiness of the makhana, I think also helps cut down some of that sugar sweetness. What I found was that all the dishes, the dal is quite gentle, very mellow in its flavours. The dubki wale aloo too is a very balanced, very composed sort of a dish. In the paneer prasanda, I could taste the flavours of the cardamom, the richness that comes from the cashew gravy. There's some malai that goes into it. But in that bundi raita is where I'm finding that spicy the punch, the garam yeah. red chilli punch. The sort that's making me sweat at the back of my head. <laughs> the Mudliyar cuisine with the adai. Uh, so that's the netoli that we met downstairs. Yes, sir. Uh, now, of course, it's been fried into that netoli mean varuval. Varuval, varuval, yes. means varuval means fry. Varuval means fry, yes. Uh, and then that's the. Muranga, katrika, and manga kolam. Drumstick, brinjal, and raw mango sambar. And that's the. Nati koli kolam. Nati Koli Kolum and then this Kollu is rasam. the Kollu Rasam. And what is this? So that's an Atika Paniyaram. Atika Paniyaram? Yes. It looks very much like a gulab jamun. Very no? similar sir, but this is made with urad dal. Sometimes they say you should make a beginning with dessert, so probably we'll do that. So is this supposed to be hard or soft? It's supposed to be a, pre a pretty dense dessert. Ah. So very similar to an uddin vada but a little more dense. So you call this the? Atika Paniyaram. Atika Paniyaram. So yes. Paniyaram is also the... Uh, Paniyaram basically means like dumplings. Ah, so anything... And what does Atika mean? Sweetened? Uh, yes. The Atika Paniyaram. This I have never tasted before. Mm. 
So you got the sweetness, but then you can taste the flavor of the udu. Yeah. Uh, so some way it'll remind you of the flavor of a vadai. Yes, sir. Very uh, similar, but this doesn't have any onions or pepper in it. Correct. It's just a little bit of salt. So it's a sweetened udu na vadai. Similar. Yes. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you very much. And then of course we have the Vadapu Vada sir. Oh, this is the Vadapu, the banana flower. Flower, yes. Ah, you didn't show this to me down in the kitchen. I would have eaten one of them right there, hot. And this is the Adai. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. And that's a mango pickle. What is that? Yes, a kadu mango pickle, the small one. The small one, the whole mango. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Thank sir. You. I hope you enjoy your meal. Thank you. I can taste that garlic in that rice. There's also the curry leaves that you taste in that. Some onions too, I think. Mm. I can taste the grainy texture of some coconut, perhaps, in Thank that kolumbu. Kolumbu. Mm. What's nice here is that when they cook the meat, they cook the meat with the skin. Because when it comes to the chicken, all the flavor is mostly in the skin. In the skin. Especially when it comes to natakoi. I think that adai also does well to soak up that curry. Some wadapu. I can taste the warmth of the ginger. I can taste a bit of the curry leaf there. And the soft crunch of the lentils. Netoli. There's a touch of sarnas that I'm tasting in that netoli. Mean varuval. Let's move on to that sambar. It's a thick sambar. The murungakai is tender. I have to pace myself to also allow for the third thali, but that's again a sambar that I could have easily polished off. Not just this katori, but also a couple more. On that note, let's move on to that horse gram rasam. I love the flavor of the tamarind in that. So I think what's nice about this horse gram rasam is that it's got all the nutrients of the horse gram. Horse gram. The flavors from other ingredients. That's right. But the horse gram is not an ingredient that suits everyone's palate. True. So out here you have the nutrition of the horse gram, but then it's got all the other things that you typically expect in a rasam, including loads of the puli or the tamarind. This pickle does it come from our home? Pickles they would have got it from home. Mm. The sarnas and also the flavor of the turmeric. That probably goes into making that pickle, into preserving that pickle in copious quantities along with the oil. Also love the fragrance of that pickle. Yeah. Uh, it's got a lovely, almost citrusy sort of a fragrance to it. Mm. Also I have to be mindful of the fact that the restaurant needs to close in the next 15-20 minutes because the students, after cooking, serving, have to get back to their class. Alright, so our last thali for this lunch. Ah. I'm not going to say that we saved the best for the last, but that's a phrase that's typically used in situations like this without taking away from your colleagues who presented their thalis before you. But this looks very good. Uh, that is the... Uh, the mamsa chops. Mamsa the mamsa chops. chops that we saw emerge from the cooker. Is that my royulu? Yes, a Venkai Roy. And this was the... Uh, uh, goat chikrukai, it's cluster beans. Cluster peanut beans. Masala. And that was the... Rich goat or dal. It's rich goat dal. Birakai kolsukura. Birakai kolsukura. Yes, and that's um, tamarin rasam, chintapandu rasam. Chintapandu, yes. Yes, and uh, pumpkin halwa. So. Pumpkin halwa. We have chilli bhaji, some mango pickle, uttapam and rice. Bhaji, Lovely. So. Lovely. And what do I have the uttapam with? So I think you can have it with the mutton chops. It'll be a nice... Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Hope you enjoy. Thank you.
So I think most people who come here, they have one thali, and I guess an hour is enough. But when I'm trying to cram in three thalis in in that amount of time, I can barely scratch the surface. But like I've been advised, I'm going to go with the mamsam and the uttapam first. Kavin, would you like some from my? I'm trying the same thing. Ah, so okay, so I thought you were getting only one thali, <laughs> but I see that you managed to sneak in some yeah. dishes, huh? yeah. some katoris. Yeah. The number of katoris on his thali has increased. Would you like half a uttapam? I don't mind. Yeah, why don't you tug at it? That's Thank not half. Thank you. Thank you. Not good in geometry. <laughs> What's the gravy? I love the flavor of the coriander that you get. That's the first thing that hits you. The mutton peels away rather effortlessly from the bone. Mm. It's cooked very well. It's not a sort that will fall away. But I think when it comes to mamsam, you need a bit of a bite, no? Yes, sir, that's fair. Uh, when it has a bit of a bite, as you chew on it, no? That meat then releases its masalas. Yeah, Great. Uh, it kind of gives away. So you get wave after wave. And now I'm also tasting a bit of the chili heat. Chili, yeah. Ah, uh, the yeah. after taste. The green chilies. Green chili and peppers. Ah, the pepper too. Lovely. Excellent combination. Uttapam is a great medium to soak it up. Just allow that uttapam to rest, sit in that curry for a few moments. Thereby imbuing itself with all the flavors, the flavors of the mint, the coriander. And the warmth of the pepper. Mm. So I've known Kervin now for many years, but I'm always impressed by the number of initiatives that he and his team run here. Uh -huh. Thank you. And I think it really helps mold the students because situations like this, which are very real world, where they have customers who come, order like customers would, they prepare the food for them, they have to handle them in the manner that customers would expect. So I think there's a lot of uh, real world. We do that. Experience because, that yes. comes into. So the benefit has to be for the student and mm. uh, at large for the society. So that's why we focus on these kind of activities. Start. Fantastic. Lovely. And I love this combination of the Royalu with the Annam. There's also a bit of sweetness in that prawn, in that prawn. shrimp. Huh? Maybe because it's from mm. getting it from the onions. From the onions. Delicious. And I think there's also some coconut in that. Yes. Some rasam to finally close things. There's a certain pulpiness to the yeah, texture of the rasam. It's not the typical rasam, it's, it's mm. very different. And I think that probably comes from some tomato. Tomato. Some tomato puree that's probably gone into that rasam with plenty of the garlic. The dishes here that I've tasted of another sort that I would taste in let's say any local restaurant, especially in every plate, I think there have been certain highlights. So for instance out here that mamsam, also the royalu has been rather interesting. In the previous plates again I tasted the nati, the nati koli kolambu yeah. and also the dubki wale aloo in the first plate. So I think every plate has had one or two stars. stars. Yeah. So I think that's it from the ELR or the Experiential Learning Restaurant here at the Department of Hotel Management in Christ University. I'm going to spend some time savoring some of these dishes and I think it's also time for Kervin to get back to his class. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed this rather special, rather different episode of Gourmet on the Road. Until the next time, take care, stay safe, stay strong and happy eating. If you'd like to support the work that we do at Food Lovers TV, do consider joining our membership community on YouTube by hitting the join button below or on the home page. You could pledge a nominal sum and receive special privileges like behind the scenes footage, shoot updates, access to live Q&As and a lot more. You could support us on our Patreon page as well 
For more info, check out the links in the description below. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share and leave a comment below. Happy eating!